scary video games are the latest craze to sweep the country and most of the world, too. Millions of people are addicted to hours of gazing at electronic images on game screens and arcades and in their own homes. What makes video games so popular? Well, we search for an answer as we begin a special series on video fever, games people play. Every day, the popularity of smartphones and the mobile apps and games that accompany them become ever more popular. Most commonly known are free or inexpensive games such as Recent Sensations, Angry Birds, Candy Crush Saga, Flappy Bird, Clash of Clans, the list goes on. What makes these games so popular? How do they rake in such huge profits for their developers? Is it their addicting nature? What makes one game in particular stand out from the crowd when thousands of portable apps are being released every day? And how do so-called free-to-play games pay off? We talked to several modern casual gamers to try and figure out just that. We hope to unravel the secret behind the wild success stories of the biggest smartphone games and explain just what it is that keeps everyone glued to their phones. So, what is your favorite app game and why? Uh, it's probably Puzzle and Dragons because, you know, it's fun and challenging. Uh, do you think that game is addicting? Yes, I do think it's addicting. Uh, like how often do you play? Uh, like every day, when I have more number, I have to uh, What do you think mobile makes mobile app games like this so popular? I think it's because they're free to play, so people don't have to buy them, and you can just get it, try it out, and then they become hooked on it, so maybe that's probably one. One of the most recent app games to go extremely viral is Flappy Bird, a simple game with retro-inspired graphics and gameplay that encourages playing in short bursts. It was released by a single Vietnam-based developer back in mid-2013, but it didn't achieve its incredible popularity until early 2014. It shot to the top of the charts, becoming the most downloaded free game on Apple's App Store and reportedly earning $50,000 a day through in-game advertising. But then... He's a 29-year-old independent developer, and that's why this is kind of such an exciting story. You've never had an independent developer, one lone programmer, who makes a game that gets to number one in the charts. In this game, 50 million downloads. At one point, uh, at near the end, I guess, he's making $50,000 a day. So my immediate thought was he must have pulled this because of legal problems, but he tweeted it was not because of legal problems. Uh, he just didn't want the 50K a day? He said, it has ruined my simple life. If, if his simple Baloney. life is like, No, baloney. It ruined my simple life. Stephanie, he's not like an Upper East Side kind of hedge fund girl, you know? He's a guy <laughs> living in Vietnam. He's probably like all about zen and wants to have a simple what life. In the end, the developer recently announced that Flappy Bird would return in August of 2014 with a new multiplayer mode and parent countermeasures to its addictiveness. Was the removal of the app just a scam designed to drum up interest for the game? Or was the developer of Flappy Bird really just overreacting to the negative reception of a game enjoyed by many? We may never know for sure. What is your favorite app game and why? I like Flappy Birds because it's Flappy. And hard. <laughs> Do you think it's addicting? Oh yeah, it's addicting like cocaine. I mean, yes. So what do you think makes mobile app games like this so popular? Well, you see, the thing that mobile app games are, they're very portable, they're very easy to download, just like porn. Anyway, they're so easy and, again, free, which is perfect. What more can you ask for? Flappy Bird isn't the only app game to become extremely popular. Angry Birds, in particular, has been immensely popular ever since its inception in late 2009. It grew to become the most downloaded freemium game of all time, with a whopping 2 billion downloads over the course of the entire franchise. A franchise that is still growing at that, with several offshoots such as crossovers, cartoons, movies, toys, books, comics, even drinks and amusement parks, among other various merchandise that brings in profit alongside the download of the app itself. Meanwhile in Japan, the release of a game called Puzzle and Dragons has turned its publisher Gunko into a juggernaut overnight. Puzzle and Dragons earns Gunko $3.75 million a day, and is played by over 10% of the Japanese population. 
its North American audience, meanwhile, is steadily growing. Gung Ho now has a net worth greater than even Nintendo, and doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Okay, what is your favorite app game? Uh, well, I don't really have a single favorite, but I uh. usually like puzzle games, like, well, I don't know if you could really call them puzzle games, but, uh, I don't know, Bejeweled or Dots or Puzzles and Dragons that you normally like. Uh, how often do you play games like that? Uh, well, normally it's just like a, a time filler. If I'm ever, like, idly sitting down anywhere, I'll open it up and start playing. Uh, what do you think makes mobile games like these so addicting to people? Uh, probably their accessibility and simplicity, like... Um, literally every phone comes with an app store and you just download an app in a couple minutes and you're off, you're playing a puzzle game that's either frustrating and addicting or just simple and fun. So, uh, What do you think makes some games more popular than others? Uh, well, it it's probably, well, for example, Flappy Bird, I mean... The games that are very simple and very frustrating normally get people's attention because uh, I don't know, they always want to do better, they always want to have the higher score. Uh, so I guess it's that competitiveness that people have. Like really the reason app games are just so popular is because anyone, well I say anyone, but anyone that has a phone can like have access to them. And, uh, uh, I guess uh, there's also the multiplayer aspect. You can compete with your friends. You can try and be superior to your friends or whatever. But really, I think just the basic thing is accessibility. How about uh, what do you think makes free-to-play games really successful? Well, <laughs> uh, they're probably so successful because. They lure you in with the uh, facade of being free to play, but then they're like, oh, uh, if you want to have extra fun, you can buy all this bonus costumes for your characters, or, or uh, uh, you can buy this in-game currency that allows you to win the game ten times faster. And then, of course, uh, that uh, desire to, to win make some people spend money because they're done. It's definitely a business scheme. You have to have the right prize for paying real money. You have to know what your player wants. I don't know. I, if I play a free game, I just play the free game for free because that's what it's advertised as. I don't want to spend money. <laughs> Candy Crush Saga is another example of a super popular mobile app game that has made billions of dollars and has been downloaded around half a billion times. Several studies have been made of it and similar free-to-play games on what makes them so addicting, and what motivates us to spend money on them. One of the most basic elements is a slowly increasing difficulty curve. At first the game is very easy and you feel rewarded by the simple gameplay, but as you get to higher and higher levels, the difficulty spikes and you feel compelled to spend money to achieve the same winning sensation as you did earlier. On top of that, Candy Crush is designed to feel like a game that requires skill, but is in fact exactly the opposite. A lot of Candy Crush Saga's gameplay is luck-based, and uses the same tactics the casinos have used in things like slot machines for years. To this end, King, the creator of Candy Crush, has been criticized for misleading customers and possibly introducing elements of gambling to children. Um... I'm okay, so this will be my favorite app game. <laughs> That would be addicting. Uh, for me, no. Uh, I have bigger and better things. To do. What do you think makes mobile app games like that so popular? What makes the, well, because everybody's on their phones now. Dude. Nobody's uh, nobody's talked to anybody. Nobody looks at anybody. Uh, everybody's on their phones. So like, why not play app games on their phones? Yeah. I think we're gonna make it When they have any time, they're gonna play games like 
quicker to take the drug out, and then they actually realize that they can get a better school. Like, they can improve. There's a really, really, I would say, like, easy learning curve, but it's not like, like, time is when you get better. Yeah. If you play the game once, you know, like, you can kind of play time to get better every single time, so like, you improve your own school. What do you think makes, like, one particular game more popular than one? The amount of simplicity attached to the I mean, attached to the difficulty. Like, if a game is really difficult, but not fully on their own skill, and that makes it more fun in general, rather than a game that's extremely difficult for no reason. Mobile apps have now become an important part of our lives and a source of entertainment for everyone, not just hardcore gamers. Mobile phone gaming will most likely continue to expand for years to come, and although some will rise and some will fall, there will always be an amazing variety of games and apps that might suit you. Although some of these games may be addicting or even maliciously designed to get you to spend money, in the end, games are about fun, and as long as you have fun playing them, then surely the time and money you invest will have been well spent. Where?